In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We are grateful because of this work of restoration you are doing in our lives. Especially now that you are giving attention to restore our faith in God, which has been the thing. It got lost because human beings forgot God. They turned off from God and became independent, doing their own things, and have suffered so much from the hand of the devil, even from the judgment of God. But now divine, this is the time of restitution of all things. You are restoring the church back to biblical truths. And now it's faith you want us to become alive to. I'm praying your children will learn. And that we will come to this faith and walk with you by faith. For the just shall live by faith. And without faith it is impossible to please you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are continuing with our study on faith. Uh, the book on faith, I trust in the next two weeks or three, it will be available and every one of you get ready for that book. Amen. The title is Faith in God that Gives Success and Victory to the Righteous. I trust that your life will take a new dimension. And the second of it, which is also coming out at the same period, is Prayer made simple for faithful and holy believers. Prayer made simple. The Lord will use these books to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. This day we are considering biblical examples of faith in God. Biblical examples of faith in God. We are considering our text. Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 17 to the end. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17 to the end. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. God had spoken much to Abraham concerning the son that he was going to give him. Look at it. And then he came again to tell Abraham, take that son, Isaac, and go and sacrifice him for me. The whole thing looked confusing. Did you not promise that Isaac will be my heir? Did you not promise that through Isaac, you would do great things? You will bring about great nation. And that you will fulfill the promises you have made to me through Isaac. Yes. God 
really said so. God said so. Then, why are you asking me to go and kill Isaac? You think Abraham will be asking God that? No. Abraham knew the God he was serving. The greatness of God. The ability of God. He knew that. The faithfulness of God. The unchangeability of God that God cannot change. Abraham knew that. The power of God. So when God told him, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and go to sacrifice him for me. See Abraham's reaction. Genesis chapter 22. Verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the mount of Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him of. Now, verse 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Can you see it here? This is the life God wants. Somebody that would believe God without fear, without doubting, without questioning. Now, in that Hebrews chapter 11, ask Abraham a question. Abraham, why did you not complain? When God said, you should take your son Isaac and go and kill him, why didn't you complain? Abraham will answer you. He said in verse 19. Can we read verse 19 together? One of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 19. One, two, go. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. Full stop. Full stop. Abraham will say, the reason why I went to kill Isaac was I knew the power of God. I knew the ability of God. I knew the unfailing nature of God. I knew that when I had killed Isaac, I will wait there. God will raise Isaac back to life and the two of us will go back home. Because he had told me that it is true Isaac he was going to fulfill promises. 
which he made for me, made to me. And I knew that God who is not a man that he shall lie. And that it will still be true this Isaac. That the promises will be fulfilled. Isaac will succeed me. I knew that. Because he had told me to send Ishmael away. And so if God said go and kill Isaac. He will raise Isaac back. So I will kill Isaac and wait for. After I have finished killing Isaac. Isaac will come back to life. Then we shall go back home. Praise the Lord. God wants you to believe him like that. Because there's some of you, God gives you a challenge. He makes a way for you to get money. It could be even your whole salary. It cannot be everybody. But he just tells you. And you know it's God. Take your salary. The salary that you have collected, go and drop it for me as offering for my work. Will you complain? You will complain. God, you don't know this thing. God, I want you to understand. You know the plans I have been making. And you promised me that, yes, you, uh, that in fact, when I get my salary, that uh, you will, you, this one, this one. And what's happening? You're saying the same salary. I shall carry it and go and do another thing. God, what are you saying? He said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible. Do you know the power of God that is telling you to do that? Do you know the ability of God that is telling you to, know, to do that? Jesus told the woman of Samaria, if you know he that is asking you to give me water to drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. If you know the God that is giving you this instruction, that is telling you this, do this, or don't do it. You want to do this, please tell this other person that, you, that owes you so much that you have forgiven him the money. Hey, God, is that money I'm waiting for? If you know the God that is telling you this, you will do like Abraham. Straight. Man, God says I should tell you, that money you are owing me is forgiven. That's all. I'm going to go back home. Simple. This is how God wants. For the just shall live by faith. Enoch walked with God and was not because the Lord has taken him. He walked by faith. Total trust in God. Come to this life. God will be very happy with you. You will allow God to fulfill his power. To demonstrate his miracles. Through you, great testimony shall abound for people. In Jesus' name. Now, go forward. I'm saying biblical examples of faith in God. See Abraham now. There are many areas, but just pick this one and learn it in your life to trust in God. Now, go to the next one. Number two, the case of Isaac. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Look at it in Genesis chapter Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob. From verse 26. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord had blessed. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven 
and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that cursed thee. And blessed, or blessed, be he that blessed thee. Praise the Lord. This came to pass in the life of Jacob, who is now Israel. Let your mother's son serve thee, everyone, including Ishmael. Whatever the Arabs are doing, they are subject to Israel. Whatever they do, whatever, they will come back there and submit. Because the word has been spoken since. Is this the word of man? No. Isaac spoke by the word of God. The Lord has spoken to Isaac. One of your sons shall inherit you. As you inherited your father Abraham. And the blessings I have promised you through Abraham shall pass through him. Isaac was so convinced about that. So convinced. What Isaac forgot was the prophecy that came that the elder shall serve the younger. That one humanly he forgot but God took over that area but as for the blessing already the Lord has told him one of your sons and now he thought it was going to be Esau the firstborn that was his mistake but God took care of that area and it was Jacob the right man amen, amen. <clears throat> the right man and he began to pour the blessing did he get fulfilled? He was speaking by God. Faith is speak the word of God. Say what God says. That's faith. Say what God says. For it shall come to pass. That is faith. Don't doubt it. What God has said, say it. If God says you are healed, say it. It shall be so. If God has pronounced judgment on someone and he has told you, say it. It shall come to pass. Joseph said it in the prison. He said it. Every man according to the interpretation of his dream that God gave him. He said for the baker. He said, three days from now, your head shall be cut off and you shall be hung on a tree. Birds of the air shall come and be sucking your flesh. That's judgment. God has said to this man, his case is judgment. Pronounce it. Faith, say what God says. Blessing, say what God says. Yes. God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Say it. Hey, what if it doesn't come to pass? Why are, you, why are you doubting? Is it not God who told you? Was it not God that revealed it to you? Were you not clear at the voice of God? Is it not the written word that the Lord has quickened it for you and has given you? Say it so. It shall come to pass. For the just shall walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. So strengthen yourself boldly. As long as you know this is what God has said. Say it so. It will be the life of faith. Back to Hebrews. Chapter 11. Hebrews. Chapter 11, verse 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, 
blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, you know, Jacob believed that what God promised concerning him shall come to pass. Jacob believed that what God told Esau, told Isaac, his father, told Abraham, will come to pass over his life. And as a result, when he was dying, he spoke firmly about the future. The future shall be like this. You, learn to believe these things we're teaching you. Take them so and speak of them confidently. In Genesis chapter 48, verse 8 to 22. Genesis chapter 48 verse 8 to verse 22. The Bible says, And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons whom God had given me in this place. And he said, bring them. I pray thee unto me, and I will bless them. Now, the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face. And lo, God had shown me also thy seed. You see, I never thought when your brethren came to tell me that you had died, I cried, I cried, I cried. I never thought that it was a lie. I never thought I could see you again. This God is great. The thing I never had hope for came again. And I did not, I am not only seeing you. I have not only seen you. You mean I have also seen your children? This God is great. May God do it for you like that. Yeah. That that thing you never thought. That it could be, it could ever happen in your way. You never thought you, your eyes like this will see it. May the God of heaven count you worthy. May the God of heaven remember you. May the God of heaven surprise your life. As he did unto Jacob. He said, I'm not just seeing, your, seeing you. I am also seeing your sons. Hey, I will bless them. Yes. And in verse 12, And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And, jo and Joseph took them, both Ephraim and in, in his right hand and uh, uh, in his right hand toward Israel's left hand and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand and brought them near unto him. Remember Joseph was facing Jacob and his two children he put them such in such a way that the firstborn will be in the right hand of Jacob. And the secondborn will be in the right hand of Jacob. I mean, the left hand of Jacob. So, in the hands of Joseph, who was in the right hand? The secondborn, which was Ephraim. 
But Ephraim was in Joseph's right hand. And in the left hand, who was there? Manasseh was the firstborn. So that when he takes them to the father, it will now be father's right hand on the firstborn and father's left hand on the secondborn. Joseph, Joseph didn't know. As he has determined it, so it shall be. It was God that arranged that in his right hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Exactly. So, as he took them now to, to Jacob to bless them. Now, a mystery. My brethren, there's so wonderful thing for you to learn. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand, toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his hand, and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand, and Israel stretched out his right hand, and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. Amen? Amen. And he blessed them, I mean, he blessed Joseph. And said, God, before whom my father, Abra my fathers, Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which faith me all my life long, unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be on them, and the name of my fathers. Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Can you see? Let my name be on these children. It sh they shall be considered my children directly. They shall be with your brethren as my children. Not as they, are. they shall not see your brethren as uncle. No, they shall see, they shall mix with them as my children directly. This is the blessing I have given unto them. And the Lord blessed them. And the Lord multiplied them. And Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim. It displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head onto Manasseh's head. You know, Jacob crossed his hand. While Joseph was bringing them like this and put them in his right hand and left hand, Jacob crossed his hands. His eyes were blind. Are you hearing? As he crossed his hand, the right hand went to who? To Ephraim, the younger. And the left hand went to who? Manasseh. That's how God wanted it. The blessing God has meant for you shall never be taken away. I want you to know this and be peaceful in your life. Hey, she wants to, he wants to take it away. Hey, I wanted to marry this little lady. Hey, somebody has come fast and played me fastness. Which fastness? You, God didn't mean her for you. If that lady actually went to another man, God didn't mean her for you. Otherwise, if God meant her for you, even if somebody comes by struggling, it shall never work. That job, if God meant that job to be for you, it shall be for you. Even if you were not counted, or they were counting to give you a lower thing, that higher thing shall be your own. They didn't even consider that David was going to be among those to be king. When Joseph Samuel told Jesse, bring your sons. I'm going to pick one from, one from among them to become king. He didn't call Je uh, David from the wilderness. Did he call him? No. He didn't call him from the wilderness. Because he didn't count him. But God counted him. Serve God. He has counted you. Yeah. That which is bringing to you, 
will come to you. So when Joseph wanted to say, my father, uh, why did you cross your hand? No, this is not the first bone. The first bone is this one. Because the blessing he was giving the first bone was too much. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the first bone. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son. I know it. <laughs> it's not ignorance here. Everything is well calculated. I know it, my son. I know it. Well, he also shall become a people. And he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he. And his seed shall become a multitude of nations. God is the one doing this thing. You know, there are some of these things that God planted them. It's not in our realm. It is over there. Don't struggle this matter. If you see your younger brother coming up popular, please submit. You see your younger sister coming up popular, please submit. You see things working, favoring this one. Allow it so. God plant it long. If you struggle, you will only embarrass yourself. The matter is not of intelligence. It is of grace and divine choice. God, who made man, chose it all. So what's your problem? Why are you envying? Why? Why are you envying the, the person? Why are you envying your brother? Why are you envying your sister? Why are you struggling? You also shall be blessed. It's not that you're rejected. Another thing is that this choice is not the choice of who goes to heaven, who doesn't go to heaven. As for going to heaven is left for each of them. The choice of Ephraim to be the greater here doesn't mean Ephraim might have greater reward in heaven. No. It's, but for service on earth. For placement on earth. As to who should be this, who should be that. It has happened to Ephraim. Manasseh, be quiet. Submit to it. Don't play carnality over the matter. Let your righteousness be known by your submission and humility. Is that okay? No, take it. You are sister, two sisters. Who determines who marries who? Who determines who marries who? Somebody comes to marry you. It's a farmer. Another person comes to marry your sister. is the president. What will you say? Eh? Submit. Do your family work with your husband well and you will go to heaven. <laughs> Don't envy your sister. Are you hearing me? And let not your sister be proud too because the choice of position is not heaven. You must follow the rules of heaven to go there. That God has chosen you for that doesn't mean heaven is automatic. Heaven has to deal with your own righteousness and following biblical qualifications. So please, my brothers, for the things of the earth, there are choices God has made already. Amen? Amen. There are choices. Don't say, who are you? Ah, God considers him some, somebody. So, that is what he said. But no, 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 he will be great too, but certainly, surely. But then the question comes how did Jacob come to speak so certainly like this? The communication of the Holy Spirit in his heart. He believed the directive he was receiving from the heart, from the witness of the Holy Spirit. He believed. And so he spoke. It came to him. It was God that caused it to be downed upon him. That this is what will be done. It got down on him. This is what. And then he spoke. 
align yourself with that which the Holy Spirit communicates to you. You'll be walking by faith. Although you cannot prove it. Is there any way to prove here now that each Ephraim will be greater than each Manasseh? No way of proof. But God has said so. God has assured you so. Say it. Believe it. Act it. Because the Lord has told you. It is failed. Back again to Hebrews. Chapter 11. Hebrews. Chapter 11. We now read. Verse 22. By faith. Joseph. When he died made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, by believing the word of God. Do you believe what God has said concerning holiness, revival movement? Take it in your heart. Do you believe that God said, this is my movement? I am holiness revival movement. I raise this movement for end time exploit. Do you believe? If you believe, speak like that. Take action according to what God has said. These people are speaking what God has said. What their fathers have said, recorded, communicated to them. They had it and are convinced that it is so. That what God has said will come to pass. Genesis. The book of Genesis chapter 15. Verse 24 and 25. Genesis chapter 50. Verse 24 and 25. There, the scripture has this in record. It says in verse 24, And Joseph said, Unto his brethren, I die. And God will surely visit you. Everybody say, God will surely visit you. God will surely visit you. This is faith. Why are you so convinced? The word of God cannot change. I know the God that made, that made this promise. I know the God that has spoken. He will surely do it. Because he spoke. He spoke to my father. He spoke to my grandfather. He spoke to my great grandfather. I know him. Two. He acted it out in my life. I saw his handiwork in my life. How he picked me to fulfill his promise from my youth until now that I am dying. I am confident in God. That's why I say surely. Things, you, hardship may come as if it will not work. Darkness may come as if the light may not come up again. But I use the word surely because that darkness will eventually give way to light. Yeah. That mountain that you are seeing directly before you there is a road beside it that you are not aware. Amen. You will pass that mountain. Yeah. I said it because in my circumstance, 
I never knew it will work out. When I was thrown into the pit, I thought it was over. I was brought up again from the pit. When I was sold to Egypt, I thought that is all, but the Lord went with me in Egypt and made me Lord over Potiphar's house. When they accused me and I was thrown to the prison, who again, a stranger in a strange country, who knows me? I thought I would be there forever. The Lord brought me there and made me governor over Egypt. I was there just saying, hmm. Never knew one day I would see my brethren, not even to talk about seeing my beloved father. God brought my brethren and my father to my eyes. God will surely visit you. Yeah. So convinced about this. That's what he told them. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel saying, God will surely visit you and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. I am dying but you are going to leave this place. God, I know God's ways. Faith is believing in God. Don't you know God's ways? Are you not assured of the way he walks? All the way he has dealt with you these years. Have you not learned example? Have you not learned a principle coming out of it that this God will not abandon you on the way? I believe him. Everybody say, I believe him. I believe him. Say it again. I believe him. Say it confidently. simple. That's faith. Did it happen? Did they eventually leave the place? Yes, Did they leave Egypt? Yes, that your faith shall materialize. Yes, you believe that he will heal you. You will come and see later that that sickness is gone. Yes, you believe that it shall happen you will come and see later that it shall happen. Yeah. Widow, do you believe you will marry? You are just so strong in your faith. Get ready, it shall happen. Yeah. How it shall happen? Your faith will work it out. God is looking for believers like that. He's looking for people who have faith like that. Because they are the ones that will make him walk. He is a God that's, that's and that called those things which be not as though they were where. So to have a child like you believing that those things which you have not yet seen, they are like that. You are a, you are a child of God indeed. He likes that. He likes that. And he will do them. They will appear. In Jesus name. So, back to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Again, the Bible now is talking of the faith of Moses' parents, rather. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. Because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Say, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Say it again. Say it again. The king's commandment was strong. 
See it in the book of Exodus. Chapter 1. Exodus. Chapter 1. Verse 22. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river. And every daughter, ye shall save alive. This is the king's commandment. And because of this commandment, whoever breaks it, any Israelite or Israelitish woman that broke this commandment was in danger. In danger of their life because they disobeyed the king's commandment. Executionists were going around to execute the king's commandment. It was very risky because you see all this while a child is crying there. Are you hearing that? The child that these people hid in their room would cry. And the people, supervisors were going around, checking from street to street to hear any cry that a child had been born. In fact, the pregnant women were marked to know when they had given birth and what they were giving birth to. It was an hard thing very hard. But when they gave birth to Moses, God told them, don't give up this child. I'm interested in this child. I am going to use this child. When they God told them like that, don't, God told them, don't fear. Pharaoh is under my control. The supervisors, all of them are under my control. This child, keep this child. Because God said so, they didn't release this child. But what miracle? The people did not come to ask her, whose child did you give birth to? They didn't come. Miracle number two. The child Moses could cry, but nobody was around to hear. This God is a savior. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, what is the evidence of faith in this chip, in these people? They despised the commandment of Pharaoh. The Bible says, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. That shows there's faith. Faith has come. Brethren, we need to preach by faith. Otherwise, in a country where the enemy wants to silence everybody. You might be thinking, hey, what will happen to me? What will happen to me? You won't say anything again. You will not open your mouth to preach the truth. Because they will report you. They will send assassins after you. They will send higher killers. They will arrest you. Preach what God tells you to preach. Nothing will happen to you. The very hair of your head is all numbered. And none of them shall fall to the ground without your father's permission. Amen. Do you know this? Who is the president? There is the higher than the highest. And the higher than the highest, you belong to him. You are serving him. 
Is there any other person that can contend with you? When you are together with the owner of a dog, what does the dog do? Can the dog come to you when you are with the owner and the owner say, Hey, get out from that place. Can the dog still jump on you? No dog does that. You are safe. And once the owner says, Don't mind, the dog will be coming. Don't you come? The Lord said, Don't mind that voice. Move forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Because some of you are too afraid, like particularly some women, afraid of their husband. Hey, hey. The Lord said, what are you doing? Keep quiet there. I said, move, go and serve me. Go and serve me. Your husband is in my control. If I allow him to abuse, I allowed him. Because tomorrow it's going to be for your good. And it's also going to help his conversion. Are you hearing me? There was a man that was talking to his younger brother. Give your life to Christ. I've been telling you, be this type of sinful life. You see, give your life. God will forgive you. The younger brother gave him a terrible slap. Bah! I think he fell. He fell. And rose up and said nothing. He said, nothing, oh, thank you. Nothing. Uh -uh. What's happening? Before you know it, the brother said, I am ready now to give my life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> because this one is too much for me now. <laughs> what even made me to slap you? How, I am a terrible sinner. I am wicked. How, how wicked, younger brother slapping a sinner brother, young, and, Please, it's sin that did it. Give I surrender now. The Lord allowed them so that it is part of the thing that will convict your husband. Otherwise, why are you afraid? The greater God, the great God is with you. Don't be afraid of the king's commandment. You know, some people are thinking that it's all commandments that you should obey. If you obey all commandments, you cannot please God. Are you hearing me? If it is all the government's commandment, all your husband's commandment, all the commandment of the place, all this, you cannot please this God. For God's sake, there are things you cannot do. Stand to it. And the Lord will redeem you. Amen. The Lord will protect you. Amen. The just shall live by faith in the God of heaven. Who is able to preserve them, defend them, protect them. Back again to Hebrews chapter 11. This thing I am saying, there are people here that they, they have testimonies already. Amen. 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 In Hebrews chapter 11. Now. Verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He had respect unto the recompense, the recompense of the reward. Moses was a great man in Egypt. A royal man. A prince because he came from Pharaoh's house. From history, as we understood, Pharaoh didn't have a son to succeed him. So eyes were going on Moses 
to succeed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was a great king of the world. In fact, it, Egypt was like America, ruling over the whole world. The fear of Egypt was upon all nations of the earth. The great king. But by, the Bible says, Moses had had the promise of God to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. And to the fathers, Moses had heard all these things because he was a learned man. He had heard that God had a, a promised land for his own people and that these people would be living here after about 400 years. Moses had heard about that. And that God was removing them to a new land flowing with milk and honey. Moses made, he believed that these people were living this land to a better land and that he would identify with them because he was not an Egyptian. He was, an, he was a Jew. He was an Israelite. And his own people had been chosen to be special people. Therefore, he identified with his people. Whatever was the suffering, he knew God would fulfill his word. And these people will eventually leave Egypt. He knew the circumstances that surrounded his birth and preservation. And that it was only God that did it. And this God was already working on Israel. He would be to them. He would belong to them. He would associate with his own people. Whatever the suffering, let's suffer it together. Why? I will enjoy the reward. Because certainly the reward will come. Certainly we shall go to this land flowing with milk and honey. And this is the God of heaven. We shall have the blessing on, of earth and heaven. So he forsook the pleasures of sin. What is it? After you are great, you have money. You have eaten rice and stew very plenty. What is the next thing but immorality? Pride goes before immorality. I'm great. Women will be following like... What follows uh, sweet things? Eh? Ants will come. How many of them? Is it only one? <laughs> so, once the money is there, once the great thing is there, Women. That's the pleasures of sin. That is but for a moment. He forsook those things. I take righteousness with my people. I'll go the way of the fear of God. Because of the reward that will come. By trusting in what God has said. Believe in what God has said about heaven. And don't allow the world to swallow you up. Reject it. Reject the greatness the world is promising you. And take the inferiority of God's people. They laugh at them. They do all these things. But take it because of the reward that will surely follow. The God that has promised them is a great God. And the reward will come. I say the reward will come. This heaven is a real place. All this thing you're doing now by rejecting, forsaking the pleasures of the world and taking unto God's own, you will reap the reward. Again, the Bible says, the righteous shall be rewarded on earth even before heaven. Amen? Amen. The righteous shall be rewarded on earth. Moses forsook Egypt. The leadership that he would have gotten in Egypt, he said no. Do you know, we don't know the population of Egypt. But what Moses lost, leadership, he regained it a thousand times. He became the qualified leader of the children of Israel 
leading about six million people through the wilderness. Which king has ever led people through wilderness? The record was found in Moses. He that will save his life will lose it. But he that will lose his life for my sake shall find it. The leadership that he forsook came back to him in a better quality. With wisdom. That God came down upon Mount Sinai. The mountain shook. The, the whole earth were afraid of what they saw under Moses' leadership. No king could compare with him that which is forsaken. The Lord gave you the better thing. Forsake the world. Better things are in Christ. Where do you want to go and marry an unbeliever? Hey, the man is, in fact, the man has three cars. The man is a lawyer. Is what again? <laughs> Your eyes are following after the world. And it's coming to cause you to backslide. It's coming to remove you because of what? Forsake the treasures of Egypt. And see what the husband God will give you. Hey, this woman, you know the woman, she finished, in fact she has master's degree. Ah. Master's degree, wearing short pants in the, on the road. You want to marry her because she has master. And it's working. It should be, in fact, she's taking a lot of money. You're marrying for money. Forsake those things. And the Lord will give you a wife. Even that lady will come and see your wife and salute her. And give her honor. Because of the glory of your wife. Why are you thinking that God is nothing? The world is deceiving you. Look to God. B better things are with God for your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go back again. Verse 27. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. When the Lord told him, go and bring my people out of Egypt. Don't stay in Egypt anymore. I'm taking them out. Moses accepted that. He accepted that and stood on it and said, we're living. We're living this place. When the king said, Pharaoh said, eh, okay, let uh, you... Just let a few of you go. Let the, your wives and your children and your cattle remain here. Moses said, not a hoof shall remain here. Pharaoh was angry. The anger covered Pharaoh. He didn't know how to do. How do I treat this person? What will you do, Pharaoh? The man before you, God has made him a God to you. God has made Moses a God to Pharaoh. I have made you a God to Pharaoh. Whatever anger Pharaoh has, what can his anger do? The anger of man shall praise the Lord. He stood to it. We are living. Not a hoof of a cow. In fact, one leg of the cow cannot remain in Egypt. Everything we are going with our cattle, everything. He forsook Egypt. Whatever is the anger of Pharaoh meant nothing. Why are you afraid of the anger of your boss? You're standing on righteousness and you're bothering about my, my boss. In fact, that is angry. I, what does that mean? What does his anger mean? What will he do with the anger? Will he swallow you? Will he terminate you? Nothing. The will of God must be done. I say the will of God must be done. Amen. I say the will of God must be done. Amen. Don't mind the anger of anybody. The anger of policeman. The anger of soldier. The anger of who? who you see, give me bribe. I say I'm not giving you bribe. You're angry. What will you do with that anger? 
Go and do what you want to do with it. But I am standing to righteousness. Because my God says I should not do it. Hallelujah. Amen. So, that is the word of God. That is the word of God. And verse 28. Through faith he kept the Passover. And the sprinkling of blood. Lest he that destroyed the firstborn shall touch them. Look at it. True faith. What he did in Exodus, 20, Exodus 12 verse 21 to 23. Exodus chapter 12 verse 21 to verse 23. The Bible tells us here. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel. And said unto them. Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families. And kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop. And dip it in the blood that is in the basin. And strike the lintel and the two side posts. With the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel. And on the two side posts. The Lord will pass over the door. And will not suffer a destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Now, how did Moses say this? We say faith. God told him. And he did what God said. He told the people, do this. Have you had a thing like that? I have not. But God said I should do it. Have you had that happen anywhere? No, I have not. But God said I should do. And I knew it was God that spoke it. That is why I'm telling people to do it. Did it work? Did the angel of destruction eventually came? The angel came indeed. And by the Passover, by observance of it, by the sprinkling of the blood upon the altar, the people were saved. What if he joked at it? What if he disbelieved it? There's some things God told you to do in your house. To do over your children. Some are very careless over it. God will not force you. If you don't do it, you will face the consequence. The Lord told the children, told the Egyptians, I am going to send a great hailstones and fire upon the fields. Let every man bring his flocks from the field to the house together with his servants. Some believed that it shall happen. They had faith in God. That what God said he would do. Some didn't believe. Those that believed. Went and brought their, the servants and their flock. Back to the house. From the field. And many didn't believe. And what God said he would do, he did. Great hell, great hailstones and fire was rained upon the fields of Egypt. And those cattle and those servants died because they refused to believe God. God told you clearly. God revealed it to you. He revealed to Joseph 
take this son to Egypt, for they shall come to seek his life. You don't want to act on it. You don't want to act by the revelations the Lord has given, very clear, very clean, very true, well verified, well authenticated. It's for you. But Moses, when the Lord told him, he did exactly what the Lord says. The just shall live by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. If you want God, God, do this, you won't do. God, God is telling you, do this, you will not do. Do this, you will not do. Then how will you serve him? He's a God of faith. How will you please him? You frustrate your work with God. Because you're not walking by faith. The just shall walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall survive by faith. So through faith, he kept the Passover and delivered the children of Israel from the judgments that poured down upon Egypt. Back again. Hebrews chapter 11. Biblical examples of faith in God. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 29. By faith they passed through the Red Sea. As by dry land. Which the Egyptians are saying to do. Were drowned. By faith. When the wind parted the river the Red Sea and there was dry land the Lord said let the people cross it will just take the people who believe God to cross because you are seeing see water to your left hand side wall without end to your right hand side wall without end and you just see a path in the water follow I say follow. <laughs> I say what? Follow. follow. Except you believe God. You'll be looking like this. Hey. <laughs> what if this thing melt down upon me now? God is like a child. A child will be crying. Mother. Hey. <laughs> but the people believe their God. You don't know the works of God. Is it the first time you're hearing it? Is it the first time you're coming in contact with God? You don't know his works? He said, move. I have commanded the waters to stand still. I say, move. I say, go forward. The people of faith will go forward. You're going forward because the Lord says you should go forward. You are marching through because the Lord said, march through. And you know you will come out save the other side. Because God says so. But did God tell the Egyptians to go through? He didn't tell them. God didn't tell them. Let them not enter. Because the word that will keep the water standing was not released for them. So they should not. If Israel said it's their God. Who does not fail and know the greatness of their God? And that's why they, they marched through Egypt. Who dried, who emptied this water for you? Is it Bear? Is it the God of Egypt? Then why are you entering inside? When children of God are doing a thing, you who don't know God, why are you doing it? You refuse to repent. You, you think that you can just be drinking and eating freely. You don't know that we pay, we pay righteousness for it. So, which the Egyptians are saying to do were destroyed. The work of faith is not for sinners. The work of faith is not of, for sinners. Righteousness and faith move together. All these people who are sinning and say, we are faith. We are living by faith. It's not the faith of Christ. 
Because faith does not work with sin. Liars, cheats, will say that it's faith, it's faith. No. They cannot walk in faith. God can give them crumbs that fell from the children's table. But it's not all the time. It's not the normal principle. Normal principle of faith is for children of God. Amen? Amen. Again, verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. The Lord told them, march down the wall of Jericho. Just march quiet. Be marching around. March round it for six days. Then the seventh day, march round it six times. The seventh time of marching round it, the seventh day, shout! The Lord has given us the land. Every, make a terrible shout. Is this instruction clear? Faith is obeying divine instruction. Simple. How will it work? We don't know. We don't know. Somebody was speaking a revelation of what he received happened during that time. He said, the angels came and sat on the walls of Jericho because the walls were so were as high as they were as, as they were thick so that you cannot dig them down you know the walls of those days to protect the city the enemy cannot dig it down the enemy cannot climb up so the angels sat on the walls as someone was saying waiting for divine obedience and obedience to divine instruction for the lord had told the angels these people as you are seeing on the seventh day they shall walk seven times just sit down there and be waiting for the seventh time when they walk seven the seventh time and started shouting cause the wall to fall in fact, somebody said they caused the world to sink to the ground because even if it is lie like that, it will still be high. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The power to do those things are already there. Obey instruction. Whoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt it in his heart. But shall believe that that which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he said. It shall be done unto him. You are not the one to do it. Yours is say it. If you say it and never doubt. The power to do it will go into action. Just believe what instruction you have received and obey. I had a story on this line that a particular young man was always going to his was on, on the way to his farm there was a mountain there. So he had an, an impulse in his heart. The word of God says whoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and shall not doubt it in his heart but shall believe that whatever he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he said. That, this scripture just hooked on this young man. He, he just believed that this mountain will not be there. I don't know what is his reason anyway. He kept on confessing. Anytime he was passing, as I had this story, he kept on confess, confessing. And believed that it shall be like that. Actually, it happened that the government gave road construction 
and the road had to pass on top of that mountain, they, uh, by that mountain. So it required that they should break the mountain pieces, clear it out so the road should pass there. It was done. I say it was done. Amen. You will go and speak. That thing, speak to it. I say keep on speaking to it. Amen. When your faith is really complete, your faith is, you have come to that assurance and believe it. You won't see it there again. Amen. It shall be gone. Amen. I say it shall be gone. Amen. And shall not doubt it in his heart, but shall believe. Don't doubt it in your heart, but believe. Keep on saying it. Keep on saying it. Whoever shall say, that's the word of God. So, verse 31, by faith, the hallowed Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. By faith, the hallowed Rahab did not perish with those in Jericho. How did it happen? See it, the Bible tells us in the book of Joshua, Chapter 2, verse 9 to verse 14. Joshua chapter 2, verse 9 to verse 14. The Bible tells us how this woman came to her faith. How she came to her faith. In, in chapter 2 verse 1, it tells us, And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Now, you can now see Verse 8. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that faith already had been formed in her. What caused this faith? Knowledge and understanding. Information. The word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing the word of God. The testimonies of the acts of God. That's how she got it. She heard. He said, I know that the Lord had given you the land. And that your terror is falling upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard. Faith cometh by hearing. For we have heard. Some here and want to fight it. Some here and believe. Some have heard of what God is doing. What God has said about holiness movement. And believe. And come happily. And say yes. I will serve my God here. Some here and are fighting. What do they mean? I will, I will handle it. They want to fight it. But two kinds of human beings. Which one are you? Are you that he, the one that hears and it causes you to believe and you flow along? Or you hear, you say, you are angry. Or you say, you will stop it. It will not happen. See, she said, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites, that were on the other side Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man. 
because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. I heard and believe God. When I had that testimony, I believed in God. When, that, when I had that account, I believed in God. You see, that God is great. God is mighty. And I want to be identified with him. Faith is believing the testimony of God. And releasing yourself to align to it. Amen? Amen. Bringing out yourself to benefit from God because you believe the testimony of God, of the works of God. And he said, now, verse 12, now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that ye shall also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father and my mother, and my brethren, and my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from dead. By faith, because she had. And the men also told her, in, gave her instruction, put a, a scarlet cloth, red, tie it by your window. Bl by the blood is red. They wanted to introduce the salvation by blood. That red thing, standing for the blood, because it is by the blood of animals. They themselves had their sins forgiven year by year. And it is by the blood of Jesus Christ, sins shall be forgiven forever. So, identify. She put that cloth there and at her window. I identify. All these things by faith. By the word of God. Submitting to this instruction, it is by that faith, trusting, submitting, she saved herself, saved her father's house, and they didn't perish with the rest of the inhabitants of Jericho. Let's go back. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. And what shall I more say? The examples are many. The biblical examples are multiple. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who, because they trusted God, who, because they believed God, who, because they carried out divine instruction, through faith, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, Obtain promises that God made for them. Stop the mouths of lions. Quench the violence of fire. We believe God. That if you throw us into this fire, our God will deliver us. Even though, if not, we will die and never worship your idol. That type of faith brought the Son of God into the fire. And they quench the violence of that fire. Faith in God. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Because of God. The enemy pursued them but they couldn't succeed. Because of God. Faith in God. Out of weakness were made strong. Let the weak say. I am strong. Wax violent in fight. God, oh God, stay the sun until we clear up these people by faith in God. Works violent in fight. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. David said, you come to me with spear, with, 
with uh, bow and with arrow, with a shield, but I come to against you with the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day shall the Lord cut off your head from you, and the Lord shall deliver the Philistines unto my hands, that the whole the world should know that God is in Israel. And by faith in God, just releasing a sling, that mighty man fell, and the Philistines big race. You will achieve great things. Amen. You will achieve great victories. Amen. By faith. Just believe God. All those witches and wizards. Their fire shall be quenched. Amen. Their power shall be quenched. Amen. By faith in God. Christians shall bring down all this religious business. All religious attacks. All army of the aliens all these ones gathering in the bush and say that by faith all those things shall be cleared out of their place just God will do it our God is able our God will fight for us our God will go for us our God will answer our prayers by faith your God will defend you. All those people that rise up against you, they shall fall flat. Amen. Your God will defend you. Amen. You're going for that interview by faith. You're going for that thing by faith. You're going for that business by faith. God shall prosper you. Amen. His promises shall be yea and amen in your life. You're going, maybe you're even going for hospital operation. You're going by faith in God. You will go and come out safely. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord will not disappoint you. Amen. Since I was young and now I am old, I have not seen the righteous that trust in God disappointed. Because God is faithful. I am therefore announcing to you, hold to him. Amen. Your father will not disappoint you. Amen. Believe in him. Amen. It shall be as he has told you. Amen. Confess it. And don't fear. You shall see it with your eyes. Amen. You shall touch it with your hands. Amen. Your mouth shall laugh. Rise up upon your feet and hold to God by faith. For the just shall live by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We will win. Believe God, you will overcome. And this is the victory that overcame the world, even our faith. Those things will vanish out of your body as you hold to God. The impossible shall be possible. As you believe and look unto God. Look unto me and be yet saved. I do it in your life. Without faith it is impossible to please him. is your faith stand firm you will not fall you will not die you will come out of it for the just shall live by faith for the just shall live by faith You will survive by God. Believe him. Confess it. Go by divine instruction.
Be strong in your faith in God. God will use you to, to move mountains. He will use you to win great victories. He will use you to invent many good things. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Jesus name we pray listen to this song with comprehensive faith in the name of Jesus you shall move mountain you shall raise the dead with comprehensive faith in the word of Jesus there is nothing impossible, nothing impossible, comprehensive faith in the name of Jesus. I say, you shall move mountain, you shall raise the dead with comprehensive faith in the word of Jesus. Nothing impossible. I say, Amen. Nothing impossible. Oh, yes. You shall move mountain. You shall heal the sick. You shall bind the devil. Amen. Amen. Now, with faith in the name of Jesus, with faith in the word of God, the Bible says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. You are going to release healing here now. Amen. Seek people here through your prayer shall be healed. Amen. People that are oppressed through your prayer shall be delivered. Amen. Those demons, you are going to bind them. Amen. You do it and believe that God is going to settle them over there. Amen. For whatsoever ye shall bind upon the earth shall be bound in heaven. And what ye shall loose upon earth shall be loose in heaven. Re go forth and release the power. Amen. And God shall justify it. Amen. Heal the sick that are here now. Amen. Deliver the oppressed that are here. Amen. By your power. By your word. By your word. By your word, release.
Father, my God, break the yokes of the people. Set the people free. Loose the people. Let your healing, let your deliverance come upon the people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everyone that is sick, receive healing. Everyone that is born of oppression, be delivered. In Jesus. God deliver you. God heal you. God set you free. In Jesus. In Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Everybody is praying for you. Everybody is praying for you. You also, you are praying for other people. Oh Lord, pour down your healing. Oh God, pour down your healing. Jesus, pour down your miracles. Pour down your deliverance. Pour down your deliverance. Miracles of God. Receive by faith. Receive by faith. Receive by faith. Receive by faith. Release miracle upon people by faith. Release healing upon people by faith. By faith, they just shall live by faith. They just shall live by faith. They just shall be healed by faith. They just shall be delivered by faith. Release it upon their life. Release it upon their life. Jesus. 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 Let your word be true in our lives. Let your word be true in our lives. Let your word come to pass in our lives. Healing by faith. By faith. By faith. Healing in Jesus' name. We believe. Receive. Children of the living God, release the power. Your father set it. Your father set it. Release his word. Release his word of healing. Release his word of deliverance. Release his word of miracle upon your fellow brother. Upon your fellow sister. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Miracle. Healing. name we pray believe it shall be well believe in his word it shall be well. I do believe do you believe shall be well with you believe in his word it shall be well it shall be well receive believe it shall be well with you you believe in jesus it shall be you will be here receive your healing you receive your deliverance believe it shall be well with you you believe in jesus it shall be hallelujah 
Receive your progress. Receive your progress. Believe. Believe. Worship God. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Believe. Receive. Receive your miracle from God. Believe. Receive your miracle from God. Believe. Let the impossible become possible. Believe. Miracle in your life. Miracle in your family. Believe. Miracle in your marriage. Miracle in your workplace. Believe. Believe. I do believe. Do you believe? The power of the law, the miracles of God, the healing of God. The deliverance of God, receive it in your life. Let your yoke be broken. Let your yoke be broken. I break your yoke in Jesus' name. Let the word of God be fulfilled in your life. Let the promises of God be yea and amen in your life. Believe it shall be well with you. You believe in Jesus, it shall be, it shall be well. Receive it is well. Receive it, it shall be well. Receive it in your life. Be with I believe it shall be well with me. I believe in Jesus. It shall be, it shall be well. It shall be well. I do believe. Listen, the door now has been opened unto you. I believe in my spirit as the Lord has communicated. Doors have been opened unto you. You will live. You are healed. You are delivered. You will prosper. In Jesus' name, I declare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep on thanking him. Keep on thanking him. Keep on worshiping him. Keep on blessing his name. It is done. It is done. Begin to worship him. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, 
production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior.
purchased me with your blood you are my lord and my savior you left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin I believe, I believe.